Hello everyone and welcome back to the career mode. Today we're at Kazakhstan and Assen. So uh, I'd say pretty opposing tracks for me. I'd say Kazakhstan's probably one of my least favourite. I don't enjoy it too much. But then we've got Assen which is a... Uh, I quite like Assen so hopefully we can have a good run round that. We've qualified P3 in Kazakhstan. So not too bad to start off the day. And I'm going to go with the medium soft. I think the soft rear will hold up here. But the medium front, I, I think I'm going to pick every track now. Because after the race I've done with the soft front, it just seems not to work. So, yeah, let's see how this pans out. The fans in the stands are waiting in anticipation. The riders are ready to take on the first turn. As soon as the lights go out, the race at the Sokol circuit is on. So here we are then, we're on the inside line for turn one. Hopefully we can get a good start for once. And it's lights out and away we go. And yeah, it's not really ideal, is it? Well, we've only lost one place. So we're going to hang it through turn one. And we only lose one place, so not a terrible start. We send it back up the inside of all solar and we're back up to P3. So nicely done. We've hit Holgado as we now head through turn four. We're trying to go around the outside of um, Colin Via. And for some, why are the AI so slow? Qualifying was um, very close and AI just aren't going fast or are they just really fast at the end of the lap? And at the start of the lap they're just really slow. I don't know but we're leading the, the way of the Kazakhstan Grand Prix so far. As we now head through turn six. Just taking swooping lines, we run a bit wide there. And onto the outside curb, that's not going to help our cause. And Kyle Vyatt, he's probably going to overtake us again as he gets right up to the back of us. Make contact with him on straight. And into turn nine we go. As he's lost it, and he's, he's taken us with him, and we've had to run off the track. I've kind of turned into him a little bit. But he's forced us out wide. And he's gone down and he's now out of the race. Not sure what to say about that incident to be honest. But there you go. That just happened I guess. He's kind of taken us with him on the way. Of him going down. We've picked up our first track limit warning too. So we're going to end lap one in eighth position. But potentially the fastest man on track is now down and out of the race. We now head into turn one, trying to catch up to this group at the front again. AI were really slow in set to one last time round, so I hope I can gain on them again. As there are some very bizarre lines, that's Stefan and Nepa. Stefan and Nepa actually helped me in qualifying a lot. I got a massive turf from down the main street in qualifying, so he definitely helped us out. But he is running all sorts of lines right now. He's doing the Furosato from. Um, might have been Catalan, no it can't, I don't know where it was, but when in Furosato was acting really weird with his lines, I think that's what's going on, because he's running wide at every single corner, something just can't be right, but we're, we're working our way back up the field again, and yeah, I mean some people's lines, are, they're not the greatest are they, we run really hot into the earth, and Try and give Nepa the favour again. We're going to try and get in a slipstream of Joel Kelso. And we are gaining a lot. The battle at the front's heating up though. As we're going to head down to turn 9 again. Hopefully we don't collect Joel Kelso as well. As that's someone really wide. That is. That's Tatsuki Suzuki. He's ran off the track. So all this battling is slowing them down. It's slowing the whole group down, really. As we run really hot into turn 10, I've hit him. I'm going to let him stay in front there because that was an absolute killer. As he got the inside, oh, I've had to set up on him so I didn't lose the front. And now we've got two warnings, both at the exact same corner. I didn't want to kill uh, Suzuki then. But he's now end lap 2 in P6. And the battle for the win is still on the cards. Into turn 1. 
And everyone's running so wide. There's two. And someone's gone down. It's Ortola and Holgado. They've both crashed out. Also, even Ortola and uh, Holgado, they've both gone down. Just so wide at turn one. And Holgado is out. Somehow Ortola's still in. But two championship contenders. Oh, maybe not Holgado. It's not Holgado at the top. But definitely Colin Vaya. You know, they're fighting for the championship. Making these crucial mistakes. And it crashes galore, and it's Furusato leads again. And I think at this point in time, he will be leading the championship. We've made our way all the way back up to P3 now after that lap one incident with Colin Vire. But we're getting our lines right now. We've got to hope this soft rear lasts to the end. But we're back where we qualified. And we're back on form. We're four points in front of Vaya in the championship now as well. Because of uh, what's happened. We're running hot through turn nine. But yeah, the group's kind of spreading out a bit now. We're going to go really late on the brakes. Just about get that start. I don't want to get another one in there. If I do that every lap, I'm going to end up with a long lap. <laughs> and that the final corner. And we're... I wouldn't say, I'm not sure if we're catching or not, because the gap's been staying around one second. I think Furusato just does a lot more pace. It's our fastest lap of the race, but Furusato goes a tenth faster. So, Furusato, he is the fastest right now, and the AI normally are quicker than me at the end of the race. So... Maybe we'll be able to get Rueda, but Furusato looks like he's on a charge. And he could just be running away with us. Are we going to send it? Oh, we've completely hit Rueda out the way. But we have got the move done. And we will hold that in the side line. Oh, because we want to go on the charge now to try and catch Furusato. Before he gets away any further. The gap stayed the same this whole lap. Well, now it's going up. <laughs> we just need to get in that striking distance as Rueda tries to look up the inside of us there. And then through the hairpin. And then on the exit, and I'm almost perfecting my lines, and I'm just losing time. I mean, his straight line speed is incredible. He's just gapped us about three temps on this straight alone. Maybe more. He's got us around four attempts on that straight alone, so... Yeah, I think that's where all the time is just coming from. And the gap is just getting bigger and bigger now. I don't think we finished P2 all season. So... We had two P4s, I know that. But... We've not had a second place yet. We might, not, we might have not even had a third. But yeah, to show us how well we're doing right now, we've we've pulled out about a second on Rueda that lap. We're currently about to improve our lap by a tenth, but for us also, he just goes four tenths quicker. And yeah, I'm not going to be catching him if he's running that pace for the rest of the race, that's for sure. I'm trying my best to try and catch him, but it just doesn't look like it's possible. We run really hot into the exit there. Oh, we run even more wide. Mess up it there. And we're wide on the exit, so maybe it's our tyres just falling away from us a little bit. But we still held the gap to Rueda, so I don't know if he's holding up that group. Not really. Doesn't look like it. Maybe we are just faster. It's just Furusato using his insane pace again. Cut the corner there, don't want to be doing that. On the exit we go, and we're up on our time again. So we're going faster each lap, and we are gapping Rueda, it's just Furusato. His pace is just immense. With the pace he's been showing this season, you'd expect him to move up to Motor 2 next season, but... And he can still win the championship. He's just so fast right now. He's 
on fire. I'm not sure if we've caught for a saltist, like we might have done. They're just on the streets, he just gaps us, so... On the exit of the final corner we go. And you're going to improve again, but Furosato improves as well. So, not much we can do right now. We are the fastest. I mean, look, we've pulled out a two second gap to Suzuka. We're much faster than the guys behind. But to the gap in front, to Furosato, he's just got more in it than us. With two temps up on our delta, we're pushing to the absolute max. We have caught him, I think few temps so far. Oh and then we've high sided we've high sided that turn four. Oh I just can't believe it. It's another stupid high side. I mean how many of those have we had this season? It's absolutely unreal. I mean I was pushing as much as I could. I was three temps up in my delta I think. So I mean I, I couldn't push any more. And we've somehow high sided I mean that is really bizarre. I didn't even feel like it was going to go, but there you go. We've now got to fight for P2 once again, which I think we will get because we was much faster than them. And then again, though, our software might be dying, and there's only just over a lap to go. But look, we're matching these guys on the straight line speed. For us also, it's just gone. As we're back up the inside of Joel Kelso, already done that this race. But if Rueda and Tatsuki Suzuki, we didn't lose loads of time from that crash either. We lost about three seconds, so we did get let off a little bit. But now we're fighting our way back up. We've hit the back of Rueda. And then around the final corner. And then in the slipstream to start the final lap. And we're about to get onto the podium if we can just send it up the inside at turn one. Here we go. And we've made the move stick. Or have we? And we clip Suzuki on the exit as well. And we've hit the back of him again. And then we send it up the inside because they're just so much slower than me through the section. We're up on our delta still despite this battling. Going to be more careful in through this time, not absolutely send the power on. We're still just over a tenth up, which is incredible. Shows our pace is just really, they're so good. And look, we've already pulled seven temps out on the guys behind us. I mean, this is quite incredible, really. Our pace is almost matching for us, also now. They pick up our third track limit warning there. Just trying to be a bit of... I've, you, I don't believe it. And Suzuki's hit our bike. And there's been lots of crashes. And I don't know what has just happened. But Nep is now out. And I don't know what I've just caused. But I've, I've high-sided again. I, I don't know how I've managed this. Honestly. It's an absolute disaster. It's a, just a high-side show. And can we still recover a P4 here? In Kazakhstan, I mean, if we do have two crashes, that would be rather impressive. But I just caused an absolute mess there on the exit. As you're going to get the cut back on Munoz. Is it my tyres causing me to high side? Who knows? As you go into the final corner. As you get a bit of wheel spin. And then in the slipstream of Suzuki. And his bike's is faster than mine. And we're going to come across the line with P5. It was an easy P2 to an easy P3. The riders are returning to the pits and will soon join them in Park Ferme for the usual post-race interviews. Unbelievable race. I mean, we've come away with P5 at the end of the day. I mean, what a mess. I don't know what I just caused at the at the uh, hairpin then, but just crash after crash after crash. I don't know what that's going to do to the championship now, but we could have definitely capitalised after this race, but um, definitely not. So let's check it out. We've somehow retained fourth in the championship. However, we're 34 points off for Asalso now. 
definitely not ideal. Furusato right now is the man to beat. But yeah, that is the championship standings and then into the constructors. And we've actually regained the lead again. Me and David Alonso have taken the lead over the Red Bull KTM IO team. That will be because of Colin Vi's DNF, I'd imagine. So that's good after Kazakhstan. And then the next race is Assen. So let's jump to it now. So then we are back here in Assen. And it has been raining for both sessions for qualifying. And it is still raining in the race. So not ideal conditions. We've qualified P4. Only a tenth of the guys at the top. It's Colin Vire on pole. But crucially, Tayo Furusato, your championship leader, by I think 17 points or 14, something like that. He's qualified all the way down in P17. So he's got work to do today if he wants to get a good result. But obviously, as we know throughout the season, this race pace has been stupidly good. So, yeah, I don't know what to expect from Furusato, but hopefully we don't crash in the rain, which is quite likely. There's something magical about racing at Assen. The crowd is ready, the riders are ready, we're ready. And in a few moments, we'll see the start of the Dutch Grand Prix. So then, here we are. On the grid. It's lights out, and away we go. And it's not an amazing start. But that's as per usual, we're going to head down through turn one. We're going to go around the outside of one empty helmet's bike. And we're not going to make it still, oh, are we? We're just hanging around the outside. And maybe up the inside. And we get the move done. Push one to the outside curb. And we're off, so we've lost one position off the start. Steve Anor Solo has taken it. But it's still Colin Vire who leads the way after crashing out last round with myself, so he can hopefully get back on form. He drops. Didn't lose any place in the championship, but he lost a lot of points. And for us after, I have no idea where he is, but he's going to be dropping a lot of points at the moment, so change in the championship happening as oh we've knocked off all solo we've hit the back of him we've gone into the corner way too fast and he's now at the race so I think that's two race both races this video we've just hit someone off on the first lap and they've caused a crash very sensitive there in the rain so it's unfortunate I've not been penalized for it but I'll take it but yeah again it's not the cleanest but what happens is what happens we're going very slow through Ramshick here. That was a pretty poor line. And then into the final chicane. Not a bad run. Get on the inside curb. And then into the slipstream of Danny Holgado. And then on the brakes into turn one. We're so much later. Oh, we've hit Colin Vier again. You wouldn't believe it. We just hit him off the track. And he's gone down again. I mean, there's no way I don't get a penalty for that. That was horrific. I mean, he's somehow not out of the race, but that is now the second race in a row I've just punted him off the track. Well, not as bad as that last race, but... Yeah, that was pretty horrific. I just completely outbroke myself, but I've not been penalised for it. When I didn't know where to break, I just guessed and... I mean, I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't break any harder in the rain. But I've not been penalised, so... But then again, it's Danny Holgada who also crashed out last race. Back in front. And I do believe as well, Colin Vire is one of my... Uh, I wouldn't say rivals right now. But it's his one of my objectives of rival. But in the, the status of relationship, he's one of the very unhappy ones of me. So, yeah, me and Vire have a bit of a, uh, bit of a rivalry right now. He doesn't really like me. We're fighting against the Otter and he's really dropping place in the championship now. It's going to be two non-scores in a row probably. And that's going to really hinder his championship hopes. All because of me. 
Danny Holgado though is running a good uh, pace right now. Or with wide and some round shirt. And then into the GC chicane. Bit wide. Right, here we go in the slips from Danny Holgado. We're not going to hit him this time. He's not very fast in a straight line either. As we make the move and now hard on the brakes into turn one. And yeah, we've overshot it again. Absolutely massively overshot it. Not even close. Oh god, I've been given a track limits warden. And we're just holding firm. Yeah, turn one, I need to break a bit earlier, I'm not getting it right at all. And so not taking a very good line out of there. And it's all bunching up. Can we get a nice swooping line into turn six and then into turn seven? We've hit the back of slightly. We're going to try and go around the outside and then try and go up the inside. We've got it down round the outside and then hard on the brakes. Oh, but we're going to run off track again. It's going to slow us down. You hold it, hold guard has gone round the outside. We're trying to hold him off, and he's done. He's, he's got it. He's done it round the outside. We're just forcing him out, and we're going to try and hold it. We picked up our first track limit warning. We're defending for our life here. Just trying to hold position. And we've done it. We're holding the lead. As we overshot that, so that's now our second warning. And now we've not got a great run down the straight either. And Fura Sars has made it up eighth now, so his race pace coming in clutch once again. And then so when we go, we finally stayed on the track. That'd be useful. The Raiders also got a track limit warning now. As we run really hot through turn three and he's going to slide it up the inside then we're just going to close the door on him and force him wide we've forced him wide but he's still going to go for the inside line and he's going to have it and we make contact with him down the straight and we're going to hold position This race is it's still in the balance for us. We're on a clean race, roughly. Well, apart from that um, Vire incident, that certainly wasn't clean. Passing for ourselves, not crushing. We're keeping it all in one piece. We're going to try and hold it round the outside of Holgado. If we do, no way through. Close the door, we've picked up another warning and I'm just trying to be way too defensive. Don't want to be picking up a long lap pit, it's going to be horrible of once. And into the GT chicane. We've gone down to first gear way too early. I don't want to get a track limit warning, so we've had to give up the position. We're actually down that, now down to third. So we're just throwing ourselves off here, and look at our front tire. We're going to absolutely send it again. It's so late on the brakes. I think Zero Two has also gone off the track there. But yeah, I'm breaking so late into turn one. I'm scared I'm going to hit him every time now. That's through Strob, and we go. And can we get in the slip for him to retake the lead once again? And we are, we're going to go for it. We make the move. 
and we're going to hold the position on the inside line and take it to the outside and there's no way through but we're going to run a bit wide and he's going to have to run and he's going round the outside of us again and he's got it stopped absolutely perfect he's got it stopped better than us and he broke later and went round the outside so absolutely nothing I could have done there I mean, he's, just, he's just done that perfectly Furusato is not in the top 8 right now either so it's the perfect chance to claw in lots of points in on him but they're coming from a corner speed we're through there back up on our delta once again and we're going to send it into Ramshuk, which we do. Can we force whole guard out wide off the track? He picked up another warning because of it. Pretty unfair on him, but it was almost high side out of the exit of the GT chicane. And it's a personal best lap for us. Not the fastest of the race, but look at our front tyre. It's just... It's going light green to blue. It's just so cold in these conditions. We've got three laps longer just to hang on to this lead. My teammate David Alonso is sat in fourth right now, so he's, he's having a good run. To try and hold this place in the team's championship furthermore. So we run wide into Straubin again and just power it out. We've done whatever we can. Oh, I gap to Vian, that was 10 seconds, he lost time somehow, oh, I don't know what's going on. As we picked up a warning in there, that's quite unfair, because I don't think I touched the grass then. But we're now one warning away from a long lap penalty, which... Uh, yeah, I don't think that should have been a warning, but we have to go with it now. No going back. We're still holding position, the long lap would completely finish us, but... We're just doing whatever we can as we're getting extremely close to the outside of the track. Just getting on the power up. Holding the outside line. And there's just no way through. But is there a way through? He's going to try and look for it. On the inside, but we're going to take the tight line. And hold firm. As into the GT chicane we go. We're being so careful not to pick up any track limits. As for us also back up to 8th again now, but as we start the penultimate lap and it's still a whole guard, I'm still just trying to go for it. As we're still holding position into turn three. And it's Rueda who's now moved at second. Devil Alonso, so whole guard has just dropped two positions out of nowhere. Rot wide at Stroven again. And it's Rueda. Is he going to take the lead of the race? Might be for the first time this race as well. We're just trying to hold him to position. Well, I'm not too sure what to say, but here we go then. We broke a little bit too early there, and he's closing, he's closing, he's closing. But we take the tight line so he can't go up the inside, but he might get the better exit. Which he will. Look at our front side. Light green once again. We're just keeping them behind. And it's a matter of time until they overtake us because we are not faster than them anymore. As yet, Rueda slips up the inside. I'm going to send it straight back though. We we're so wide though, we just can't keep a line. And David Alonso's going up the inside. David Alonso's going up the inside. He pushes that wide and it's now a three way battle for the lead. We turn into David Alonso. We're going to try and go round the outside of Rueda. Sure, he's going to run hot. Yes, he does. He might even get off the track. As into the GT chicane we go. And we're going to start the penultimate lap in the lead of the race. And it's been a mistake. We've now got a bit of a gap to the riders behind. We've got a 0.7 of a second gap. That's probably going to come down anyway. But 
I don't know what's happened there, but one of them must have got a terrible exit. And it must have just held up the whole field. As Furosato is up to fifth place, I mean, he's just completely caught. He's now in fourth. He's completely catching up. But now we're holding a bit of an advantage, and maybe if we got the win secured. Through Strub, when we go, we are so poor for that corner, but it's the last time we have to do it this race. Half a second lead. It's all happening behind us now. Loads of battles. Our front tyres light green. Just trying not to pick up a track limit warden and on this last lap. Just taking our lines. That's all we need to do. Just doing everything perfectly. The gap's now down to point three. Hard on the brakes we go. It, the gap is still point three. They're just closing. As we run wide at turn ten. Is he going to send out the inside? I thought he was, but he's not going to. We're still holding the line to Rueda. Oh, I thought we almost cut the corner there. But we're still holding it. It's going to be three corners to go. Has he got the line? No, he hasn't. Into Ramshook we go. As we run really hard. Is he going to go through him into the final corner? We take it defensive. And then it's a run up to the line. And we got it. We've just about taken it. He couldn't quite find the way through. While we wait for the director to take us to the Park Ferme to meet today's stars, let's take a quick look at the final results of this Moto3 race. Well, I can't believe what just happened there. I mean, that has got to be one of the closest finishes in the world. It's probably the greatest battle we've had all season as well. Right up to the finish line, no crashes. And we've somehow managed to take away the victory. Fastest lap of the race goes to Jake Ralston. So, I don't know how he's managed to get that. Colin Vyer outside the points. Uh, Furosato made a good recovery of that race. Gained 11 positions. But, yeah, we just held our own that race. We just managed to defend the lead. Broke so it into that final corner, but we've just managed to secure the place. For the championship standings now, we've moved up to second. We're now second in the standings. And it, that's a perfect race for us now. That's really put us in a good position. With Suzuki just behind in third. Furosato still with that 19-point lead though, so we still got to close him down. But we've ruined the 1-2 in the championship for the Japanese. Uh yeah, it would have been more helpful if Furosato would have lost more points that race, but for others though, they've still dropped a huge amount of points. And Colin Vi could definitely be leading the championship now if he didn't uh, get taken out by me in both races. But yeah, David Alonso still sixth. And as for the team's championship, we've now extended it to 37 points to Liqui Moly instead. So yeah, and Red Bull KTM IO still 40 points behind. And also the MC Helmet's only 43 behind as well, so this is a full way battle for the, for the team's championship. And it's only CIP Green Power who are yet to score a point. And look at these four as well, 29, 29, 28, 28. So it's all close to the team's championship for quite a few teams. So yeah, that's been it then. A great race in the Aston there. That was quite good fun. So cool. Could have been better if it didn't crash, but oh well. We could have definitely gained more points. But yeah, good racing us on that. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.